like to greet you in the name of the Lord and want to thank you for loving the Word. <laughs> the, the, the Word of God has the solution to any and every human problem. And if you will search the Word, you will discover there that there is a solution to your problems, also a solution to your joys, how to express them. Paul says, I know how to be abased, I know how to abound. That means know how. It don't mean it got him down, it means know how. Uh, he knew how to eat a piece of bread and it rejoice as if it was a feast. And he knew how to have a feast and uh, eat it as if it was a piece of bread. And so God was his director and the Holy Ghost was the one that guided him and he did not permit circumstances to lift him up or put him down. Uh, he, he was God's man and he knew how to handle it. We're studying one of the most exciting chapters, uh, books in the Bible, and one of the exciting chapters is today. Open your Bibles to the book of Daniel. He was tremendously uh, involved in what we call the word of wisdom, knowing the future supernaturally. In the New Testament, it's called the word of wisdom. Uh, a prophet in the New Testament normally is according to uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 3, involved in just three things, and none of them foretells, foretells of the future. Uh, but the Old Testament prophet was a seer that saw things that had not yet come to pass. This man uh, was involved very deeply. Um, only two or three men in history has so known the future as this person did. Now, in the book of Daniel, we began with chapter 1, and the, the, main, the, the main thrust of that chapter is that Daniel became an exile to Babylon. That he was an Israeli and, and lived in Jerusalem, was of the nobility, possibly royalty, and was carried in irons on his hands and feet into a foreign country in Babylon. And rather than becoming discouraged and defeated and hurt and, and feeling so sorry for himself, he learned the Babylonian language, uh, he, he moved in the court, and he obeyed God and became a great man in a foreign land. And so, whatever circumstance you're in, <laughs> if you'll handle it right, it can be a blessing to you. Did you get it? I don't think so. <laughs> any predicament that you're in, any sorrow that you're in, any bad thing that you're in, can be turned into something good by the power of God. And it's not the circumstance, it's you. Two people can have the exact same circumstance. One goes down under it, one goes up under it. And so handle life well. Uh, Daniel handled it well. Very, chapter one, he became an exile. Chapter two, he saw the image that was of gold and, and silver and brass, uh, revealing the Gentile empires. The only one that had been born at that time was Babylon, the golden head, and he had to interpret that. And the word of God is true. There's never been a nation like Babylon, never been one so rich as Babylon. And, and so he saw the world empires, including what's going on today with the, uh, with the clay and with the iron in the feet, which is the termination of world empires. And in chapter three, uh, we stop the historical aspect and go into personal relationships. It's the story of the fiery furnace. Uh, three young men were tried because of their faith. And they, they stood true to their faith and won. Glory be to God forever. How many are glad that you won? Yeah. If you'll stand true to your faith, you will win. You have to win. That's number, chapter number three. Chapter number four, we studied there the vision of a great tree. Now, this time we, we, we also uh, left off the historical aspects of the book of Daniel and dealt with one man, Nebuchadnezzar that Babylon at that time was a tree that filled the whole earth. That all the nations of the world were the limbs in the tree. And all the peoples in the world were the leaves in the tree. And from that tree, the whole world was suckered, it says. It fed the whole world. All the cattle of the world were underneath that tree. And then Daniel said, I foresee that this will be cut down. The tree will be cut down. And that the king will become an insane person living with beasts 
for seven years. It came to pass exactly like he had said. So there was a, a little change in the book of Daniel in that it told a, a local circumstance which did come to pass in the midst of the mighty and vast prophetic vision that spread itself out over 2,500 years. It happened. The king went insane. Uh, uh, so crazy until they let him run with the animals. He was restored by the power of God, reinstated into his kingship with all the honor he had before. God can lift you up and God can push you down. You didn't hear me, did you? God can lift you up and no man can push you down. Are you sick today? Well, why don't you say amen where I can hear it? Amen. Amen. Not very good yet. <laughs> Chapter number five, we find the dissolution of the first world empire. Babylon is destroyed. So we get back into the historical vein again. But then we immediately uh, cease from that movement of empires to chapter six where Daniel is placed in a den of lions and, and was preserved by the mighty power of God. We call that in the New Testament, the gift of faith, where God does the work and you enjoy it. The gift of the working of miracles is when God through your hands does that which is supernatural. The gift of faith is when God does it and you get the glory for it. Hey, that's the one you like the best, isn't it? All right. That was chapter 7. We have the, the vision of the beasts coming up out of the sea. Very different kinds of beasts coming up out of the sea. That was last, last Sunday's uh, lesson. And uh, these beasts, when they came up out of the sea, uh, were not sea beasts. <laughs> the first was a lion. The sea represents multitudes of people all through the Bible. And the beasts were nations. The lion nation first that had eagle's wings. So they had the king of the ground and king of the air in the one great empire, Babylon. And then he went through all the beasts until the beasts of today that could not be destroyed. I mean, that could not be analyzed. From the time of the Roman Empire spread out all over the world, you've had a confusion of empires ever since, including today with communism ruling in the north and over one half of the whole population of the world and democracy uh, trying to do something that it's not sure of. That brings us to today's lesson, which is chapter 8. And, and here uh, God gives us details concerning uh, Persia, the empire that was yet to come, and the third world empire, which was to be Greece, and they represent the silver and the brass in the, in the great statue uh, that you saw there. They represent the bear and the leopard of, of Daniel chapter 7. So the Medo-Persian empire and the Macedonian uh, empires uh, were kingdoms that were coming just after the time of, of this man Daniel that was prophesying. All right, now let's read together, shall we? Beginning in verse one. In the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, that after that which appeared unto me at the first. Now, uh, it was not the king that saw it. Daniel saw this vision. So this is a man of God seeing it, not, not, not a pagan emperor uh, as Nebuchadnezzar, but a man of God is seeing it. He said, I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan. Put a little circle there. He is no longer in Babylon. He is no longer in Babylon. He is now at the heart of the Persian Empire in Shushan. That was the capital of the world at that moment. And he says, I was in Shushan in the palace. And so uh, he, he, he was not in the boondocks. He was in the palace, uh, which is in the province of Elam. I've taught you about Elam. You ought to get the book on uh, that we call the Holy War and, and Jihad and read about Elam. From the great grandson of Noah, right straight down to uh, uh, Iran, it comes into partnership with Russia. Uh, we have the story of Elam in the Bible, one of the longest stories in the whole Bible, next to the Israeli story. And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river Uli. When I lifted up mine eyes, I saw. Now when you see, it's a vision. When you dream, it's a dream. And behold, there stood before the river a ram. So we have here the ram, which had two horns. 
Now, this was a Medo-Persian empire at this point called Aram. Two horns because it was Mede, the Medes and the Persians. And it was a family relationship. His uncle, uh, Darius, was, uh, uh, was in charge of the Medes over here. And then the Persians uh, were the stronger. So th there were two horns, the Medes and the Persians. And the, and the Persians destroyed the Medes. Uh, because of superiority, and then it was only one. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. That's exactly just what I told you. And the higher came up last. So that means that the uncle came up stronger first, and then the, the, the rest of the family emerged a little later under the, under the great Persian Empire. Then he says, I saw the ram pushing. Which way did he go? No empire, listen carefully, no empire has ever moved east. There is no such story in the history of mankind. Empires move west. That's the reason we know we're to the coming of the Lord. We're back east again with empires. Yeah, we've gone clear through the, the, the whole of the realm of, of, the, of human uh, operations until we're now back to the east again. So the ram pushing westward and then northward and southward. No eastward. So that no beast might stand before him. Uh, that means that when this uh, Medes and Persians stood up uh, become, to become an empire, no one could stand against them. No power on the face of the earth could by any means stand against them. There any that could deliver out of, the, of his hand. But he did according to his will and became great. And became great. The, the, the Persian empire did become great. And I was considering, and behold, a he-goat. Now that's the Grecian empire. You're dealing with the, with the great uh, Persian Empire, and then we move from that to the Grecian Empire. Now, these are interesting to you because all the evils of those empires are in society today. Every evil of Babylon, which, which has to do uh, with, the, uh, with witchcraft. Witchcraft was born in Babylon. And, and all the evils of the Persians, lasciviousness and lust, came out of there. All the evils of the Grecian Empire, intellectualism, came out of there, you see. So we have all the evils of the empires upon us. It's the evils of the multiplicity of empires that's destroying the world today. And that's the reason we keep bringing them up to you, not because of history. The he goat uh, from the west on, on, on the face of the earth. And as I was considering, behold, the he goat came from the west uh, on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground and... And the goat had a notable horn uh, between his eyes. Now, that was Alexander the Great. He came out of the West, it says. And that was from Greece. Look at your, look at your uh, uh, atlas and you'll see that Greece is West, you see. So he came out of the West, out of Greece, and had a notable horn. That was Alexander the Great. And he came to, the, the ram had two horns, uh, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran into him in the fury of his power, and I saw him come close unto, unto the ram, and was moved with great anger against him, and he smote the ram and break him, and, and break the two horns, the Medes and the Persians, the Grecians. Now remember, we're talking about hundreds of years before it was, came to pass. We ought to pray that God will raise up men and women in our midst today that can see the future. But you won't ever have it if you don't pray for it. If you don't seek for it, if you don't ask God and say, Lord, listen, we're living in a critical moment. Tell us something. Yeah. All right. He brought the two horns and there was no power in the ram to stand. When an empire is finished, neighbor, it is finished. When our country, America, when God's finished with it, it'll be like a worm. Everything you do will be wrong. Everything you say will be bad. When God gets through with you, you're through with. And when God got through with this nation, he says, there was no power to stand before him. He cast him down to the ground, stamped upon him. That's what happens to empires. There was none that could deliver the ram from his hand. Therefore, the goat waxed very great. And when he was strong, that's your Grecian empire. The, the great horn was broken. That's Alexander the Great. He died at only 33 years of age. Had already conquered the whole world. Died of gluttony. He ate one night so much until he died before daybreak. For, and, it, and for it came up four notables. That was the four generals that took over the Grecian Empire. Notable ones toward the, the four winds of the heaven. They took the whole world and divided it into four pieces. And these four generals took it over. Alexander the Great had no children. And he was too young to have anybody that could do anything anyway. And out of one of them came, and out of one of them came forth a little horn. Now, 
Now, you're, you're, uh, the two interpretations here, and I, I, I will give you both of them. I'll give you both of them. Uh, some believe that this is the Antichrist, and, and that we're talking here about the Antichrist. Others, others say uh, that this was Antiochus Epiphanes, the Syrian, and that he profaned the temple and terribly persecuted the Jews. And they say uh, he, he is in history. Uh, all history, uh, and, and you, you can find him without, without any problem. Historically, uh, this was fulfilled by Antiochus Epiphanes. The prophetic interpretation is a little unclear. Now, Antiochus Epiphanes is to be regarded as the outstanding forerunner of the an Antichrist. So you have someone here like the Antichrist, but uh, way back then, and let's, let's go into it. All right, we're ready. Number nine, get, get yourself open. And out of one of them came forth a little horn which waxed exceedingly great toward the south and the east toward the pleasant land. And, and so he, he conquered east, west, north, and, and the holy land. He waxed great to the host of heaven and, and, uh, and out of the stars to the, and host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Uh, this is showing you how great this little horn. Now, uh, the further interpretation is that this is the Antichrist, that you have jumped clear to the end of time, uh, to, uh, to the Antichrist. He magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. Uh, this man here, uh, uh, Epiphanes, even offered a pig on the altar of the, uh, in Jerusalem to, to, to uh, destroy uh, the, the, the Judaistic religion off the face of the earth. He was uh, simply an Antichrist. Well, so was Hitler, uh, one against Christ but not the chief antichrist that's coming at the end of time. And a host was given him against the daily sacrifice. See, he did that. And by reason of the transgression, uh, it cast, cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Uh, that meant he was successful in coming against God's people. And then I heard one saint speaking to another saint, saying unto, the, unto that certain saint, which spake, how long shall this vision be concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation? to get both to the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. Now, this is where um, most interpreters of, 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 Rev, of the book of Daniel says this definitely refers not to uh, this man that lived uh, three or four hundred years before Christ, this Antiochus Epiphanes, but to the real Antichrist. Uh, it, because in verse 14 it says unto me, until 2,300 days, three and a half years, sh then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now that is a period of reign that the Antichrist will have over the whole world. Some people sell out to the devil mighty cheap. Some girls sell out to the devil for one night of fooling around. Some boys sell out to the devil for one swig of liquor and, and one, one round of dope. And then you have hell the rest of the time. There are people that say, have a good time, and your good time could be for a few days or a few weeks or a few months or even a few years, and then it's hell the rest of the way. You got to decide what's at the end of the journey. Now, I can tell you very honestly that I worked my life by the end of the journey. Yeah. I, I, whatever I have lived, I have lived for the end of the journey. I have not dissipated anywhere along the way. Even today, I am living for the end of the journey. I am not seeing how much I can get out of life today or tomorrow or this week or this year. I am still labeling myself for the end of the journey. What do I have at the end of the journey? A man is a fool that drinks it all up today and has nothing for tomorrow. Is that all right? Okay, we'll give the Lord a hand then. Don't just look at me. He said unto me, 2,300 days, and that's three and a half years. It came to pass that I, even Daniel, had seen the vision. I had sought for the, for the meaning. Sometimes God speaks to you, and you're not quite sure what it means. And then, behold, there stood before me in the appearance of a man. That was an angel. And I heard the man's voice between the banks of the Uli, which called and said, uh, and said, Gabriel, make this man to know and understand the vision. Gabriel is the telecommunications of heaven, as I have taught you. And, and so he came near where I stood, and when, I, when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. And, and when you see angels, you will not feel comfortable. You better believe it. It'd be better to wait till you get to heaven to see them. You can stand it over there a lot better than you can down here. But he said unto me, understand, son of man, uh, for the time of the end shall be the vision. Now, you ought to make some lines under there. Immediately, the first thing the angel did was to put down a time element. 
Always look for time elements in the Bible. Look for time elements. So he, he nailed it down in verse 17. He said, understand. Put a little note right under there. Understand. Then son of man, that was Daniel. For at the time of the end shall be the vision. So that tells you that what he saw is for the end of time in the great tribulation. Now, as he was speaking to me, I was in a deep sleep on my face. So that means that he <laughs> went into a coma or something or another by the presence of this angel, and he called it sleep. And he was on his face. But the angel touched me and set me upright and said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in, in the last end. Now, put your little liner under that. The last end of the indignation. The great tribulation is the indignation of God against rebellion rebellion and hate against the Almighty. All right, for at the time appointed, the end shall be. Now, if God keeps telling you the same thing, he's trying to get your attention. You hear? He's trying to get your attention. He's already said it twice now. The time is appointed at the end. Then that's not in the beginning. It's not in the Babylonian Empire, not in the Persian Empire, not in the Grecian Empire. The ram which I saw us having two horns are the kings of Median Persia. Well, I got that one right. How many glad I got that one right? All right. Aren't you glad that history proves it's true today? And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And that bunch were rough at that time. They were not the great, at the point of Alexander, they were not the great intellectuals of the universe that came later. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. That's Alexander the Great. How many glad I got that one right? Now, Verse 22, now that being broken, uh, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And so all history tells you and gives you the names of the four generals that were serving under Alexander the Great. Each one got his fourth. One would take Egypt, one would take Syria, you see, and uh, one would take Europe. So they divided up the world among these four, but not one of them had the power of Alexander. And you see, that's right here. In verse 22, but not in his power. The, all of them only had one-fourth power. They did not have full power. Verse 23, and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full. Now, when all these world empires have come to their termination, including the Roman Empire, which we are part of today. We're, we're, we're the final remnants of the old Roman Empire. If you don't look, believe it, look on the back of a 10 cent piece. And you'll see there the crest of Rome on the back of your dime. Don't mean a thing. <laughs> Are you feeling all right? <laughs> I'm glad for that. All right, verse 23. Uh, in, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgression are come to the full. Now, you see, you ought to mark that. Transgression must come to the full. It's got to get worse and worse and worse. It's got to come to the full. It's full in Russia. They don't believe in a God. They live like animals. Anybody can live with anybody. Uh, no, no problem, you see. Uh, and so the transgression is coming to a full. Then he says, at that moment, a king of fierce countenance, that's the Antichrist, and the understanding of dark sentiments, he should be very clever, that he shall stand up in his power, shall be mighty, but not by his own power. The, the world church will take him in, uh, and, 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 and the devil is going to be on the earth at that time, it will strengthen him. He should destroy wonderfully. It'll be amazing the strength he will have. And shall prosper. That means he's going to give the people, the whole world's going to become a belly generation. Feed our bellies and we'll serve you. Feed our bellies and we'll kneel down to you. A belly generation. Get away from it. Don't let your belly be your God. Let it be your servant to serve you. And all the people said, Amen. and shall practice and prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. That means the Jews have more trouble out in front of them. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft, craft to prosper. That means uh, merchandise on the world market will be great in his hands. And he shall magnify himself, just like Nebuchadnezzar did, in his heart. And by peace, he shall destroy many. He shall come and say, I'll give you peace, I'll give you peace. And this bunch of suckers in the world say, oh yeah, oh yeah. And this, every one of them will drink him in and, and, and accept him. Not praying about it, you see, not knowing what God wants them to do. Uh, they will be taken in by the vision in, of the evening and the morning which was told is true <laughs> I like that part put a little line there too when God says it brother it's true can you say amen wherefore shut up the vision aren't you glad it's open today for it shall be for many days now you've got the whole story of the whole lesson today 
Daniel fainted. This is what happens to people sometimes that, that have a real relationship with God. He fainted. He was sick certain days. And afterward, he rose up and did the king's business. And he says, I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. Now, if you are expecting your neighbors and your friends to understand what God's doing for you, you're in for a disappointment. If God tells you something, close it up sweet in your heart and love it and meditate upon it and pray with it and study at it and God will reveal to you all that he wants you to know about it. Can you say amen? Isn't the Bible a great book? Amen. The Bible is the greatest of all books. Hallelujah. The Bible is the number one book in the world today. We have 1,500 religious uh, radio stations in America today. We, wanted, we want Christian radio to be number one. And now we're starting on television. We want Christian television to become number one. It can only become number one with enough loyal people that will support it even unto death. Because you can't imagine the millions of people that hate, they actually hate Christian television. It invades the devil's empire as nothing has ever invaded it before. <laughs> Glory be to God forever. And so we're going to believe God that in every media, there's only been three mass media in the history of the world. The printed word, the voice on radio, and the vision. <laughs> you read it with your eyes, uh, you hear it with your ears, and with television, uh, you get it both ways. God was afraid you weren't getting it well. So with television, he gave it with the eyes and the ears. It says, I'm going to give you a double whammy here. And he wants us to have it. He wants us to love it. He wants us to reach for it. Can you say amen?